get tired of giving your testimony. Because what happens is when you go around town, you see other people that are in the same condition that you used to be in. Right. And it's such a reminder that man, God is good. Yes, you shake your head and you say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. And so I come to understand what the text says in Acts chapter 2, verse 20, to save yourself because no one can help you. I went to group therapy. I went to individual counseling. I did all that kind of stuff where you be talking to people, you talk, 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 yeah, man, I'm a quick one day, yeah, okay. But it wasn't until I came in contact with Jesus. It wasn't until I came face to face with the power of God. It wasn't until the Holy Ghost came inside of my life and broke the bondage and the stronghold of the enemy that I was really set free. And so I say to you this morning that the Lord's first word to us is to save yourself. Stop complaining. Stop looking for everybody else to do stuff for you. Save yourself. I look at your neighbor and tell them like you really need it. Save yourself, honey. Save yourself. <laughs> Not only are we to save ourselves, but the Bible tells us in Jude, verse 23, that we are to save others. We're to save others with fear. Pulling them out of the fire, hanging the garments spotted by the flesh. We're to pull them out with fear. What is he talking about? With respect for God and recognizing that that person's on the road of destruction. Understanding clearly that there really is a heaven and there really is a hell. Don't you know some people, they're caught up in foolishness and they don't even contemplate or think about the consequences of their actions. <laughs> but we let us say we need to have saved ourselves. Understand the consequences of sin. Ones that seem to understand it the least are some of the folks that should understand it the most. I marvel at people at certain ages still doing stuff. I, I, I've been on drugs for a long time. I'm not on drugs no more. Hallelujah. I'm the preacher. I'm on drugs. I'm not doing drugs to come preaching to Make that real clear. See, you know, folks hear the wrong message. And you're all around town. Oh, yeah, that's a drug addict preacher over there. <laughs> that's somebody else. But I realize that at some point a person should stop. Yes. You shouldn't be 65 still doing drugs. Amen. True. You shouldn't be, you know, 53, you know, in the store still in beer. You, know, you do that when you're in high school. Yes. You do that maybe when you're in college and you're 25 and you don't really understand the consequences. But when you become 47 and, you know, and 61, at some point you understand the real consequences of life. Yes. And I marvel yes, at the fact that there are people that should know the most end up knowing the least. Yes. So I ponder the role of the church. So what is the role of the church in America? And for a long time, I thought the role of the church was to change the culture. And we're we're going to make, we're going to have a movement that changes the culture. Sound real good. Sound exciting. Come on, rah, rah, rah. Let's try to change the culture. We're going to change the culture. The culture was going to increasingly get worse and worse and worse and worse because the Bible says so. And if you try to do something that's contrary to the word of God, you'll end up being like Paul when he was Saul, and you're just kicking your feet against the bricks because you lack understanding. Right. And so God said, listen, your role as a church, the role of still faith is not to try to change the culture, but to reveal the truth to the culture so somebody else might be able to save himself. They might be able to get out of the burning house before it gets burned. They might be able to run for the hills. They might be able to run for help because they now they know which direction to run. Yes. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, he said, listen, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because he said, I come to a place where I recognize what happens when you tell people the gospel. 
I myself am a testimony to the fact that once the gospel came to me, I said, okay, you're telling me that if I get the Holy Ghost, that the power of God will deliver me from drugs. You got to remember, I didn't come up in the apostolic church. I didn't come up in the Holy Ghost-filled church. I came up in a, in a, a, a Lutheran church. By the time I turned 17, I stopped going to church altogether. I was into witchcraft and everything else. Buddhism, Hinduism, transcendental meditation. Then I was into nothingness. You know what nothingness is? That's where you just get high every day. You don't believe nothing, you just believe crazy stuff. <laughs> and after 10 years of nothingness and being bound by drugs, when the man gave me the gospel and said that this man named Jesus, who has a spirit that he will put inside of you, will deliver you from your stronghold, I said, okay, you can just try this out for myself. But I don't try to do counseling, I don't try group therapy, I don't try to do psychology, I try to. Lock myself in the room, and I'm not gonna leave today. I'm not gonna leave today. Uh, okay, what time is it? Uh, it's been ten minutes already. <laughs> but when I came to God, uh -huh. the power of God changed me and delivered me and broke the stronghold. And I'm able to say, like Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God to save me. Amen.
Don't try to bring the truth to you so you can wake up and go. 